Hi YouTube, this is Mood Disordered Mind and the camera is shaking. This is Mood Disordered Mind and um, I had a very emotional day yesterday when I went to my NAMI group. We decided to do things a little bit differently and we decided to do problem solving and everyone had their own problems and you know everyone gave feedback and everything and it's a very supportive group so I'm glad that I have that group to go to when it got to me I started talking about my bipolar and how you know right now things aren't quite stable not out of control but just not you know stable I don't know if it will ever be but that's what I started talking about and I started talking about how I don't open up to people I don't do that in counseling I'm I'm one of those people I go to counseling and the whole time I'll talk about what I did that day <laughs> or about my son or about school but not about me and not about my feelings and that's mostly because I am afraid of my feelings I am afraid of feeling of feeling those emotions of of being scared and being sad and being angry and just just all those all those feelings that come from going through traumatic experiences or you know just going through things that no one or no child no adult should ever go through and I don't want to deal with it I push my feelings down I don't want people to see that I don't even want to see it and I don't want to feel it and I don't want it but I know for myself that if I don't work on that, my feelings will consume me. Because they already affect me now. As, an, as a young adult, you know, they already affect me. And I don't want those feelings to affect my son. I don't, I don't want to... I don't want to keep them so bottled up that one day I explode and I explode on my son or on myself. And, you know, it was a very eye-opening experience for me. That's the most that I've ever shared, especially with a group of people about the anger, this just everything you know just and I was fortunate to have those people around me because in one way or another they could all relate to something that I said you know and they've all been in situations too where they don't want to deal with their feelings and I, I understand that I really do so I think that I made some progress yesterday by being real with myself, by being um, real with them, and now I just have to learn how to apply myself in counseling. Um, and even just talking about it now, I'm not really talking about the issues that I talked about, but just, but just talking about it, those those feelings are coming up, and it's very hard. It's very hard for me to feel them. I don't know what to do with these feelings. I don't know what to do with them. I just want to stop them. And I don't know how.
I just wish that certain things hadn't happened. I told them that. I told them that, um, that some of the abuse that I suffered, I tell myself that it didn't happen. It never happened to me. I know it did, but I'll tell myself that it didn't. You know, and that's my way of pushing things down and not dealing with it. And it's starting to come to the surface. And I am petrified of what that means. Or what will happen. And on top of all this, in my last video I made um, of bipolar, I talked about having symptoms of mania. Well, I think that I'm experiencing maybe a mixed episode because, you know, I'll be in a good mood and then all of a sudden I'll just start crying for no reason. There's nothing that's sad around me. I'll just start crying. And I've been taking my meds like I should. But, you know, my sleep isn't, has been off lately. I haven't been sleeping at night, and then I sleep most of the day again. I hate, I hate that feeling. I just, I don't like when my sleep is off, because when I sleep well, you know, I feel better. Whether or not I'm dealing with something like this, I just have the energy to to deal with it. And right now, I just feel I feel emotionally worn out and just I just feel I feel all over the place. But I wanted to make this video because I think it's important to document the good parts and also the not so good parts because I get to see where I am, where I've been, how things affect me. And it's good for me to see this of myself so I know that this is just, because we have a saying in our group, keep it in the here and now. Keep it in 2012. And if I look at this video after I make it, and I say, I look at it and say, keep it in the here and now. This is how you're feeling right now. That doesn't mean that's what I'm gonna feel tomorrow or in a couple days or in months from now. So it's good for me to keep that in mind. Because there's, there's um, 12 principles of support and the last one is we will never give up hope. And I think that's very important for all of us who are suffering in one way or another, whether it's mental illness or physical illness or whatever it is that people are going through, that we can all come together and, and realize that eventually things will get better. Things might get bad again, but they will always get better. Even if we don't think so, even if we don't see it, they will because I was doing really good. <laughs> And now I just feel like an emotional roller coaster and I can't and I can't find the brakes, you know. <laughs> I can't find the brakes. I know some of you out there aren't doing so well, and some of you are. 
And for those who are going through a hard time, you have my support. And I hope that we can go through this together and come out on the other side. Because because we owe it to ourselves to find happiness. And to be at peace with whatever we're dealing with. I wish I could stop crying. It just keeps coming. So. That's pretty much all that I wanted to share. I see my counselor on the 25th. I'm not even sure what day that is. I think it's Wednesday. So, you know, I'm going to make an effort to be honest with her and real because you know there may there may be something wrong with my meds or something I mean I don't know and I won't be able to see the psychiatrist for three to four months it's just the way that they do it at the place that I go because you where I go you have to see a counselor in order to get med management some places aren't like that you can get med management whether or not you see a counselor but that's not how it works where I go and because I had problems making my appointments the last time they're gonna want to see that I'm that I'm going on a regular basis and not having any issues before they'll see me and you know the woman that I met with last week told me it could be three to four months so I don't know when I'm gonna get to actually see a psychiatrist right now I have my my um, primary doctor overseeing my meds right now so We'll just, just see how things go. I'm not even sure what this video was about. I think I just had to get some things off my chest. Maybe it's just practice for when I do go to the counselor because I've already talked about things at my support group and now I'm talking about it here on YouTube. Not in so much detail here, but you know. I'm still acknowledging it. And the next place would be talking to my counselor and probably my a doctor. So I'm gonna end this here. Hope everyone's doing well. And everyone take care of yourselves.